It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. These iconic words are the beginning of Charles Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities, which depicts the effects of the French Revolution. These words represent all that the French Revolution is, for the French Revolution was as beautiful as it was terrible. This was not the first time in European history that the proletariat rose up against their leaders to reshape the government. However, this revolution showed the enormous power of the people because when they reshaped their government, they put the power in the hands of the proletariat. During the years preceding the revolution, France was not friendly to the working class. France was divided into three estates. The first was the clergy, the second was the nobility, and the third was everyone else. As long as the power kept residing in the upper two estates, the third estate would remain oppressed. She's a killer, queen, got bad agility, dynamite with a laser beam, guaranteed to blow your mind. In 1752, a man named Robert Francois Damien attempted to assassinate King Louis XV, which was not tolerated. The government executed him in the name of the king, but what was interesting is that they also admitted to speaking for the people. This marks the government's first attempt to rule for the people, not only the king. As these new ideas grew, France kept succumbing to the Enlightenment. The beginning stages of the French Revolution was to establish a constitutional monarchy rather than full-on democratic state. As the Enlightenment grew, a desacralization happened with the monarchy, meaning that whereas before the monarch ruled by divine right, now people felt that the monarchy was answerable to the people that they governed. New ideas spread like wildfire, and both King Louis XV and Louis XVI tried to root out the revolutionaries from spreading this sedition. After costly wars, the government needed to find a way to pay for them, and the best way to do this is to tax the people. Since there was no voice for the third estate in the government, many peasants felt this was unfair. In May 1789, the Estates General opened for the first time in a hundred years to help settle the questions facing the nation. As the Estates General opened, there was already tension amongst the Estates. The clergy was siding with the nobility, and the peasantry would not budge on issues. The Estates General proved to be useless in accomplishing any reform. After weeks of a deadlock, members of the Third Estate separated and formed the National Assembly, where each member had one vote, and not just the vote of the estate. Three days later, King Louis XVI denounced the National Assembly in a public meeting and demanded that the deputies go back and vote as members of an estate. The deputies were unwilling to negotiate, and the king eventually conceded. It took a few weeks, but the people eventually realized that the king was deceiving them. They started marching in the streets of Paris. By July 14th, the people of Paris had gained control of numerous strongholds, including the prison known as the Bastille. By the end of August 1789, the National Assembly had eliminated serfdom and tax privileges, as well as published the Declaration of the Rights of Man and Citizen. The ideals of the revolution were born, liberty, equality, and fraternity. King Louis XVI was forced to go along with the revolutionaries, and even notes this in a private letter to the King of Spain. But he felt that there was still hope. In June of 1791, the king had escaped with his family, trying to join forces with Austria across the border. However, he was captured only 40 miles from the border. Despite pleas for clemency, the king was sent to the guillotine in January of 1793 for treason, followed by his wife eight months later. The divide amongst the political parties over the murder of the king showed the first time the two major political parties would butt heads. The Girardins, who were popular with the people outside of Paris, were growing fearful of the fanatical Parisian militants known as the Mountain. The success of the Mountain's crusade against the monarchy would set the tone for the year or so in an era of the revolution known as the Terror. The Terror was led by one of the leaders of the Mountain, Maximilien Robespierre. 
He wanted to create a culture of virtue in France and was not willing to take no for an answer. People would spy on their friends and turn each other in all in the name of the revolution. The revolution had taken on an air of its own. People were either for the revolution or they died. Aristocrats had to give up their land or they died. Anyone who spoke of bringing back the monarchy died. And now they had executed Emperor Leopold of Austria's sister Marie Antoinette. War was coming for the budding nation. Reforms took place in the years following the terror, and more people continued to die in wars and as political sabotage, but the proletariat was enjoying civil liberties for the first time. Women were not allowed to vote, but they took a very active part in shaping the revolution's message. The right to vote was still only given to active citizens, but progress was being made. The end of the revolution was as long of a process as the beginning, and there is still some debate amongst historians as to when it actually ended. The moment the power was removed from the people and centralized into one executive was 1804, when Napoleon was named Emperor of France with the blessing of the Pope. This would make one think this was the definitive moment when the French Revolution died, but Napoleon was able to keep the reforms of the Re Revolution alive. He was a self-made man who rose through the ranks of the military, giving all the citizens of France a role model for virtuous Republican behavior. However, Napoleon reinstated social classes, though his were based on military rank. The higher your rank, the more influential you were. This created a new form of elites, even if it wasn't nobility. Napoleon's connection to the revolution goes even further when you think about his military campaign, spreading the ideals of the French Revolution. He oversaw the creation of law known as the Napoleonic Code, guaranteeing the rights of property, religions, and equal treatment under the law. Napoleon wanted to rule an empire that was based on liberty, equality, and fraternity. But just like Robespierre, he turned violent. The military was the ticket for social advancement in Napoleon's empire, and he kept his military active. By 1810, he ruled an empire more extensive than that of ancient Rome. He spread French idealism all over the continent, forcing the new colonies to adhere to the Napoleonic Code as well as other reforms like the abolition of serfdom. The European monarchies were scared, and so they unified against him. While fighting in Spain, Napoleon also started fighting Russia, proving to be his fatal mistake. He was exiled to Elba, and Louis XVI's brother, Louis XVIII, was instituted as King of France. Some French revolutionaries were not pleased, and in 1815, Napoleon tried to recapture the throne, but the Duke of Wellington defeated him at Waterloo, sending him off into exile again on the island of St. Helena, off the coast of Africa where he died in 1821. The French Revolution forever altered the landscape of Europe. However, it was not very successful at anything else. It is true that some minorities received the pleasure of civil liberties during the revolution, but it wasn't until the second half of the 20th century that women received the right to vote. Also, within 15 years of the beginning of the revolution, all the power had been consolidated into the executive branch of the government again. The French Revolution shows the power of enlightenment thought mixed with unity amongst the masses. The ideals of liberty, equality, and fraternity ring true even today, and this is the successful part of the revolution. People like Robespierre and Rousseau woke up the minds of the people in France and showed the world what the masses can do. When people realize the governments receive their authority through the consent of the people, it is revolutionary. <laughs>